What's up, YouTube, man? Welcome back to the channel. You guys already know what we love to do here, but we love to break down scary TikToks, creepy TikToks, man. TikToks that make you question reality, that give you chills. Anything bizarre, bro, you can find right here on this channel. Um, got a good one for you guys today, man. Don't want to waste you guys' time, so let's dive on in. Crimes of all time. A man by the name of Sean broke seven different laws in an effort to be sexy. He did this by breaking into a woman's home, stealing her lingerie, and walking the streets of Sacramento wearing it. Weird. A man by the name of Rutledge Dees IV was recently arrested after pretending to have a disability so that nurses would change his dirty diapers. Apparently, this was his kink, so he received therapy instead of prison. A woman was upset at her boyfriend Christopher because he let out a horrific fart. Christopher, who was lightly offended, proceeded to headbutt and choke her before she could escape and call police. A woman posing as a psychic promised her clients that she could put a special blessing on their money and double it overnight. Spoiler alert, the next day she ran off with over a hundred thousand dollars. A woman from Michigan has been described as feral after biting off another woman's ear. Why? May I ask? Well, she believed that she was a werewolf and the other woman was a vampire. When 20 year old men. Those freaking crazy crap facts are insane, bro. A woman bit off somebody's ear, a psychic taking people's money. <laughs> I guess to show you how warped and how crazy this freaking world is, bro. And a guy fight, farted, let out a huge fart, and head button his girlfriend and choking her. That's just insane. Tell me what you guys think about the comment section down below. Mary Collins disappears. Her whole family immediately fears the worst. Now, Mary had plans to meet up with her former boyfriend and high school friend, Lavi Pham. She's also meeting his new girlfriend, Kelly Lavery. You can see them all pictured in this video that he posted to Facebook. Mm -hmm. So when Mary goes missing, her family checks her social media. And what they discover is that these two, they've been bullying her online. They've left her cruel messages saying no one like her and other really so I didn't need it. Now by this point, the police have been notified of her disappearance, but Mia, Mary's grandmother, is convinced that she's still in Levy's apartment. The police actually do a search of his apartment and they find nothing. And so they don't really push forward with the case. So it turns out that, that this guy, James Lorana, was present at the time of Mary's disappearance. And he boasted to a friend exactly what the trio had done to her. I won't say all of it because it's horrifying, but they stabbed her 133 times. They put a leash around her neck and tortured her. When she eventually passed away, they covered her body in detergent and cinnamon to mask the smell. They then rolled her up in plastic and stuffed her in a mattress. James actually told his friend they were planning to incinerate that mattress as soon as they got the opportunity to do so. Now that friend was rightfully horrified. He immediately went to the police and told them what happened. As you should. They did another search of Levy's apartment and this time they ripped open the mattress. Just as they were told, there they found the body of 20 year old Mary Collins. Her family were completely devastated. Now all three were arrested. Their ringleader, Kelly Lavery, took a plea deal and was sentenced to 20 to 30 years. Not life? For more sentencing crime stories, you can hit that stop button. A boy went mi That case was actually genuinely and freaking crazy, bro. Just think about, like, the cops, they searched the apartment the first time, and they didn't even, like, notice. They didn't, like I said, they didn't pick up the smell or nothing. Uh, or they didn't even check the bed to see if something was weird with it, bro. At the final, they was bullying her too, bro, and that's just freaking crazy and insane, bro. They just they took it freaking way too far, bro. And I can't believe they only got 20 to 30 years. I thought it was going to be life, man. That's actually freaking crazy, bro. Tell me what you guys think, man, in the comment section down below. Missing and came back as a new ch child. What happened next will give you chills. In 1912, four-year-old Bobby Demba disappeared whilst on holiday with his family. His mm. parents were completely distraught and searched for him everywhere. Eventually, the local and state police got involved and a massive manhunt to find Bobby was launched. 
it would be nearly eight months later before the police would find a young boy matching Bobby's description. This boy was found with an older man named William Cantwell. William said that this kid is not Bobby. This kid is the son of his sister. William and his sister even went to court to try and prove that. But when the Dunbar mm -hmm. family took one look at this kid, they told the police it was definitely Bobby. Even the court sided with the Dunbar family. Now here's the truly sinister part. A hundred years later, the family, wanting to put an end to all this talk, did a DNA test. Turns out that kid was not Bobby Dunbar. William Cantwell and his sister were correct. To this day, no one knows what happened to Bobby. The darkest conspiracy theories. So they took away that whole kid away from his original parent because they thought he was somebody else, bro. Even like the courts, everybody was on their side. Even when the other guy, he was pleading that that wasn't, I guess, their child. Damn, bro. I didn't know they had an heir. I wait a hundred years for their family man to get justice to find out that they was they took the wrong kid, bro. That freaking blows my mind, bro. It can really get, it can stem all the way back, man. In that family, they they finally got justice at the end. Like I said, bro. Tell me, got starts in the in the um, commas, man. I'm gonna see him. The Teletubbies theory. The theory says that the show is inspired by historic events that happened in a Bulgarian mental facility. Each Teletubby is inspired by a kid that was experimented on. Lala was based on a child who had a facial disfigurement and had to smile all the time. Tinky Winky was based on a deaf child who was tied to a fence outside and suffered frostbite. Dipsy was inspired by a child who was constantly sick and ended up lying in his own puke. And Poe was based on a child who fell into fire, which is recognizable why his color is red. Hmm. Court documents for Idaho suspect Brian Kohlberger are now showing that the DNA from the knife sheath is a statistical match to him. An STR DNA comparison was performed, or short tandem repeat analysis, okay. and Kohlberger's profile was 5.37 octillion times more likely to be his than someone from the general population. I didn't know octillion was a number, but it's apparently a one followed by 27 zeros. Damn, octillion. Uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, I, was play, I was playing the game, and uh, I got bumped out the phone. Okay. That was my bad. What? No, no. It's only me home. Okay, so this was just an what accident. You called 911. Did that? you say you killed two people or something like that? Okay, how old are you? Just 17. You're 17. Do you have a driver's license or no? No, I'm not. Okay. Are you... What, Where's your parents at? Uh, where? Okay. Oh. You want me to talk to your mom? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I need trouble. Looks like he oh, called hey, the police by accident. Hey, is this up. Elijah's mom? Okay. Yeah. Hey, so what happened is, I guess, he's saying that he was playing a video game, and in the process of accidentally calling 911, he said that he killed two people, but he was talking about on the game. So we thought that there was a double murder, so we showed up to your house with a bunch of us. That's why we're here talking to your son, okay? So there's nothing to be worried about. Okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just careful. trying to, we're, we're just doing our due diligence here, trying to figure everything out and make sure that everybody's okay because we have to do that when we get a 911 call. Remember when Tara fired? As I said, well, I guess people, they need to watch out what they're doing or what they freaking say, like I said. Does he, I don't know how he accidentally bought out the police, but they heard it and they pulled out as the job. That's what you're supposed to do, man. But it could have went way worse. So he should actually be grateful that nothing actually bad actually happened because they could have kind of went in like very, could have been very an intense situation, man. You guys know the drill. Tell me in the comments down below. Who made people pass out and throw up in theaters? Well, get ready because Terrifier 3 was just officially confirmed and it's going to be even bloodier. I have no idea how they're going to top the bedroom okay. scene, but I'm excited to find out. Allegedly, the actors for Art the Clown and Sienna are both returning, so I feel like this means Terrifier 3 will be continuing the story from right after Terrifier 2. One of the producers said they'll have a bigger budget intended on giving filmmakers more creative freedom and let them be as wild as they can be. And all jokes aside, we're going for that Oscar this year. Can you imagine if Terrifier 3 wins an Oscar? I'll be updating you guys with anything I find out, so follow for more. This is the sickening case of the Killer House Party. It was summer 2011 in Florida. Tyler Hadley had been telling his friends that his parents were out of town. Okay. On the afternoon of July the 16th, Tyler posted on his Facebook, Party at my crib tonight, maybe. He followed this up at 8pm by posting, Party at my house, hit me up. 
A friend Ashley asked, what if your parents come home? They won't, he replied, trust me. Partygoers reported that Tyler seemed very anxious at the party, but it was hard to tell whether this was just nerves or substances. During the evening, there was reportedly 60 people at the party. Party. People were smoking inside, smashing bottles, and just generally trashing the place. In the weeks prior to this party, Tyler had apparently made a sick comment to one of his friends. Mm. He said he wanted to kill his parents and have a big party after. He said nobody has ever done that before. Kill their parents and then have a party with the bodies still in the house. The evening went on and eventually people started leaving. As Tyler's friend Mark Andrews was leaving the party, Tyler said he had something he wanted to say to him. He said, dude, I did some things. I might go to prison. I might go away for life. I don't know, dude. I'm freaking out right now. Mark told him, Mm -hmm. don't be telling me that sort of thing. I don't need to know. It transpired that Tyler's relationship with his parents had become strained. And at one point as a punishment, they'd taken his phone off him. In a sick plot of revenge, after Tyler's parents returned home from work that day, he took their phones off them and locked the dog in a closet. Shortly before 5pm, Tyler reportedly took three pills and then stood behind his mum, Mary Jo, while she worked on the computer. Sickeningly, he then attacked her with a hammer. As his dad ran to see what was happening, Tyler then attacked his dad with a hammer too. He then dragged their bodies to the master bedroom. He then funded the party that he hosted at the house with his dead parents' credit card. Apparently several partygoers had noticed a bad smell in the house that evening. It's reported that Tyler actually told several of his friends that evening what he had done. One of the friends decided to report this to police after the party. Tyler was sentenced to life in prison and in 2015 the family home was demolished. That's a sick case bro. How are you going to say it? To me, what was getting to me was that, like I said, he said... When that, remember earlier when she said that the parents was there, she said nobody they wasn't going to come trust me. That's how I did this because I said that was throwing me off already, bro. Killed his parents and having a party afterwards, bro. What type of person does that, man? This world is truly even messed up, bro. Thoughts in the comment section down below. Imagine going to Disney World only to be followed by someone the entire time and not even know it. 17-year-old Madison Gaston received a notification on her phone that an Apple AirTag was following her the entire day. If you guys don't know what an Apple AirTag is, it's basically a mini tracking device used to find your personal items in case you lose them such as your keys. So Madison received this creepy notification and it stated that the air tag was detected with her at 7.09 p.m. but she only received the notification at 11.33 p.m. When Madison clicked on the notification, a map appeared outlining every single place that she went to in the last four hours. So basically someone knew every move she was making. By the way, Madison was with her family and when they saw this, they all panicked and emptied their bags and belongings in the parking lot but they were still unable to find the air tag. There's been a number of growing cases where women have reported air tags following them, and this that. usually happens in places like Disney World or where kids or teens usually go. And unfortunately, a lot of criminals and predators are using air tags to stalk people, steal cars, and even kidnap children. And just so you guys know, there are settings on your phone that allows you to get notifications if an air tag is detected on you, so you might want to check that. This video is one reason why... I need to turn that on, bro. I even know there's that's good freaking stuff. Do that. Just like, just goes to show you, like, how freaking evil technology can be if it falls in the wrong hands, bro. Like, imagine somebody following you. You have no idea. That's truly scary, bro. Thoughts in the comment section down below. Why you need to make sure you are so hyper vigilant. This woman and her son were just trying to get inside the house. And look what her brain came upon. Hmm. trying to do look at his eyes he has evil intentions in his in his eyes
spot. She would never cheat, she never steal with a different guy. Ever tell you different, then it's a lie. Got away on a self defense charge. I guess because the family came in to confront him, but man, he took somebody's life, bro. TikTok was egging him on. That doesn't help. That just makes this whole situation worse, man. Hopefully, man, the family could get justice, bro. Tell me you get what you guys think in the comment section down below. This story took place in the International Indian School in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, in the mm -hmm. year 2003. Awesome. A 16-year-old Indian student awesome. in that school, born and raised in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. On a normal school day, Awesome was walking back home alone from school as he lived five minutes away. He would walk alone almost every day. It was a hot, sunny day and the roads were empty. Awesome suddenly realized that there is someone or something walking right behind him. Really? He sees a very tall woman, about seven feet tall, covered in black and wearing a niqab. Very common attire that women wear in Saudi Arabia. He just took a glimpse and then turned back very quickly without having any other thoughts about that woman. And she was about 150 meters away. As he walked, he asked himself, why was that woman very tall and walked boldly like a wrestler? In that split second, Awesome decided to turn his head for one last quick look. And the woman was right behind him. She was able to cover 150 meters in a few seconds. This boy's heart drops. He started walking faster without looking back as his house was only 50 feet away. He did not want to run because she would know that he's scared. He reaches outside, grabs the handle of the gate, feels safer, and immediately turns around. And no one was there. The entire area was completely deserted, like no one had ever been there before. Yeah. Now that there are no connecting lanes around the building that the Asim lives in, the woman had nowhere to turn. But where is she? It terrified him that she vanished out of nowhere. Given the fact that she also followed him a hundred meters plus in a few seconds, he just mm. froze and stood there in shock for a whole minute after what just happened. He goes through the gate, turns his head one last time, and there she is, mm. 20 feet away from the gate, staring through his soul with a smile. He was able to tell that she was smiling from the lifted eyelid on the rear end. Weird As smile. he froze in the spot, staring at this thing. It removes its veil slowly, and the boy sees not a man, not a woman, but a beast-like face staring at the Asim through the gate. 
after this incident, Asun never walked to school alone for weeks. Until this very day, Asun being in his 30s right now, not knowing what the hell that thing was, and why were the roads completely empty during the time span of this incident. It's weird, bro. Did she beg you to stop? Did you hear her lungs gargling with blood? Or did you see it in her face when she realized she could no longer breathe due to her collapsed lungs? What were her last words? Did you stay to watch her die? Or did you leave her there in agonizing pain as you ran away? Now a lot of people have been tagging me in this video, so I'm here to explain the backstory to this whole thing. The girl you see here is named Tristy Bailey, who on Mother's Day was found brutally stabbed and slashed to death. Now Tristy oh, was one of Day. five children of Stacy and Forrest Bailey. She lived in Florida and attended Patriot Oaks Academy, where she was a cheerleader. On May 9th, 2021, Tristan's parents reported her missing after her mother came back home and didn't find her in her room. The neighborhood came together to try and find Tristan, but failed. That's when the police got involved, where they found Tristan's body stabbed 114 times. A nearby neighbor's CCTV camera captured Tristan walking alongside with what appeared to be Aiden Fuji, who at the time was 14 years old. But then two hours later, Aiden can be seen running back home alone. Police quickly took Aiden Fuji in for questioning where Aiden took a Snapchat picture and a video in the back of a cop car. It was obvious that That's Aiden wasn't taking the situation seriously. Having fun. The cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yeah. Tristan, if you can walk out the damn... When you see this in a mock okay. it's in a cop car, guys. You know what he did. So investigators saw the snap as well as a response saying, You were with her, Aiden. You know what happened to her. Investigators also noticed Aiden switching up his story every time he was questioned about the night. Mm -hmm. After constant interrogation, Aiden finally confessed to being with Bailey that night and that they were both heading to a friend's house. On their way back, however, Aiden says that they both got into an argument and he pushed Bailey and Bailey struck her head on a rock on the way down. But investigators found a pocket knife with the tip missing, the same weapon that was used to stab Bailey 114 times. This weapon also belonged to Aiden. They also investigated Aiden's home where they found blood-stained clothes and blood-stained shoes. It was concluded yeah, that man. Aiden lowered Bailey out of her house, as they were neighbors, then brought her to a secluded area where he stabbed her 114 times all over her body. Nobody knows why Aiden killed Tristan. It's being stated that Aiden had no motive to kill Bailey, as his peers say that he always fantasized about killing somebody. Aiden was arrested for first-degree murder and charged with the death of Tristan Bailey, and he was tried on February of 2023, where he pleaded guilty, and on March 24th, 2023, he was sentenced to 40 years to life in prison at the age of just 16 years old. Like and follow for more. That story's are freaking insane, bro. He was that young and he did that horrendous crime, man. He said he fantasized about killing. Who fantasize about that, bro? People's minds are warped nowadays, and it goes even down to the kids, bro. I say you always gotta stay vigilant, man. Tell me what you guys think about the case, and I am not sorry. For something I didn't do, and I am not sorry for the things I did do. Alright. I'm not, I'm You're not, not going to raise your voice again. I'm not going to raise my voice again. I'm a horse. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I understand, you Thank you. But I will say, I'm sorry for your life.
also say this is the worst? Changes everything. Shred of mercy, bro. At the moment that first time you struck her with that hatchet, and Little Ronnie testified that he always would see the tears coming out of his sister's face. At that moment, that child knew, she knew she was being betrayed in the cruelest, most tragic and sorrowful way that a child could ever be betrayed. She was being betrayed by her parents, the one. That should be there to protect her children and love them and keep them from harm. And that was the last thing that child felt before she passed on from this earth with her utter cruel betrayal to come. That last case was freaking insane where you can really see like the pain that was coming off of that judge's eyes, bro. It just shows you how, like I said, this world is, it can be a truly evil place, man. Like, that guy didn't even show one shred of racist indecency, bro. He didn't even feel like he didn't even care. Truly crazy. YouTube, that's it, man, for this video for you guys today, man. Like I said, like and subscribe, so, man, so more people can see these cases, man, so we can get into this algorithm, so we can really get into a flow of things. Um, like I said, once again, I want to thank you. I um, want to welcome the new subscribers that's been coming over the channel over these over these couple of days. I really appreciate it. We're going to keep on going. Um, like I said, tell me in the, in the comment section down below, guys, what can I guys do to make it my videos better, man? Like I said, I'm open to any and all criticism. I'm out. Peace, YouTube.